So in this video, I'll show you how to edit your outdoor photos when it comes to Photoshop regarding skin retouching and color grading and processing your image when it comes to camera roll. So simply like the video. And in case you want to download this raw image to follow along, simply check the link in the video description to download the raw image to follow along with this very tutorial. So right now, after importing the image in Photoshop, it's going to open up in camera roll filter. So in camera roll, you're basically going to be correcting the lighting and contrast issues. So for this, I feel like I'll take the helix down and slightly take the whites down and come and open up the shadow of, of this image and take the blacks down. I'll simply add contrast to the image to around 10 and open up the overall exposure of this photo. You can see before and after. So I'll take the helix slightly lower. Then I'll come to my color mixer and play around with the hues. Hue is changing the color. Saturation is the intensity of a color. Luminance is the brightness level of a given color. So for this, I'll just come and I change the hue of the greens and I try to play around with the yellows. I feel like that is better. Then I'll come to the saturation. Remember, it is the intensity of a color because I feel like the greens are oversaturated. I'll simply take down the saturation of the greens and just do the same for the yellows, just like that. So that the model can stand out even more. Once I'm done doing that, I'll simply come and click open to open the image in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we're going to be doing skin retouching and color grading. So this is the image right now in Photoshop. So in comes Photoshop, simply come to the background layer and create two copies. So drag and drop on the new layer icon to create a new layer. So just rename this to color, double click to rename a layer. Then double click on this one to rename this to texture. So for this step, you're going to be using frequency separation to retouch the model's skin. So come to the color layer and turn off the texture layer. Simply come to filter, blur, come to Gaussian blur. So when it comes to Gaussian blur, take the radius slider down and click on an area on the skin that you feel has more skin details than the rest of the skin. Then click on the radius slider and drag it up, just like that, up to a point whereby the skin details are just starting to disappear from the model's skin. So 6 is okay. That is when the details in the skin are just starting to disappear, but I can still identify the rest of the skin or the body features. I'll click OK, select the texture layer, turn it on, come to image, apply image, and the source is the name of the photo that I'm editing. Layer, select color layer, channel is RGB, blending has to be set to add because this is a 16-bit image, opacity is 100%, the scale is 2, and offset 0, turn on the invert option, click OK, come to the blend mode, change it from normal, change it to linear light, Select both layers and drag them into this group to put them into a folder. You can rename that to frequency separation. Once you're done doing that, you can click on the drop down arrow to open up the group and select the color layer. Turn off the texture layer. So just come to the brushes and select the mixer brush tool. And in case you can't locate the mixer brush tool under the brushes, you can locate it down here. So mine is under the brushes. Then for the settings, the hardness is set to zero, soft one brush is selected. Ensure you select clean brush right there. And this second option that is clean brush after each stroke is selected. The weight we are going to be using is 9%. Load 75, mix 90, flow 100%. Make sure sample order is not turned on or is not checked. So for this, slightly zoom into the image by using command plus. Remember we have turned off the texture layer and we have selected the color layer. So we just want to blend the transition between the skin tones. So to, to blend simply click and hold down. And mix the midtones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone, depending on the image that you're trying to work on. And use a very small brush that is going to remain within the color range that you're trying to blend. So blend the midtones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone. So you can see that we have a highlight like that. So, and by the way, you have to move the brush in the direction of how a given area is shaped. So you can see I'm trying to curve my brush strokes because the forehead is also curving in that direction. So I'll do this for the rest of the image. You can see for the cheek, I'll move it in this slanting direction because the cheek is also moving in the same direction. So I reduce on the size and I blend on a given area. So click and hold down to blend just like that. And you can see by just doing this, the skin is going to turn out to look smooth than where we started. So. To increase or reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool, you can use the open and close square bracket keys on the keyboard. So I'll reduce on the size. On the nose, you can see I have to move that in the direction like that. So 
Reduce on the size and blend that highlight on the nose to create even transitions of the colors in the nose area. So I'm just going to do this for the rest of the areas that have or contain skin tone. So you can see for the face, we are basically done with the face area. So we shall come to the neck area and try to blend. So you can see for the neck, I'll move the brush in this up and down direction because that is the direction of the neck in this area. So I'm just going to blend like that, mix the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone. And in this way, you're going to be creating even skin tone transitions. And by the way, in case the transition is looking harsh in a given area, just get a very small brush and blend that transition. So take that in, into consideration. And by the way, as you're doing this, always make sure that you don't zoom all the way in because when you zoom all the way in, you can't see the uneven skin tone transitions and you can't identify where to blend and where not to blend. So I'll just blend like that. You can see the hand is moving in this direction. So reduce on the size in case you want to blend on a small area like the fingers and just use a very tiny brush to blend the transitions in those areas. Once you're done using the Mr. Brush tool in majority of the areas, simply come and turn on the texture layer and you can see what we have been able to achieve. So you can as well work with the texture layer turned on to see or identify every area that has an even skin, tra skin tone transitions in your photo or your image. So in case you really trust your site, you can as well work with the texture layer turned on. So the reason that's why I turned it off initially is because I want to see or identify the uneven skin tone transition without having any kind of distractions from the textures. You can say before, after, before, after. So once you're done using the Mr. Brush tool, you can just stop right here and get to the textures. So it is time to work on the textures and remove any pimples or skin blemishes. Select the texture layer, come and get the clone stamp tool. And for settings, it is a soft one and mode is normal, opacity in the flat 100%. So you can click to change the flow and opacity. Align is checked. Sample is set to current layer because we want to remove blemishes that are part of the currently selected layer. After that, simply zoom in by using Command Plus on the keyboard or you can use Control Plus on the keyboard. And this time around, zoom all the way in. So after zooming in, reduce on the size of the constant tool by using the square bracket keys on the keyboard and remove a pimple. Hold on the Option key on the keyboard, Option, and click on a clean area near the pimple. Alternate for Windows. Option. Click on a clean area near a pimple, but ensure that the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish or the pimple that you want to remove. You are basically copying and stamping clean skin over the pimples or over the blemishes to try to remove them from the model skin. So take your time as you're doing all this because at the end of the day, you want to get a very nicely edited image. So take your time with the blemish removal process. So I'll just do this. I'll just come to other areas and I try to sample. So one finger should be placed on the option key on the keyboard or on the alternate key on the keyboard to keep on sampling from different areas. Remember, we have to sample from an area that is nearby or close to the pimple that we want to remove in a particular area. So take your time as you're doing all this. One thing on the option and one finger just to click just like this to replace and cover the pimple or the blemish with clean skin. So I'll just do this quickly. Remember to keep on zooming in and out to see in case it has created any kind of uh, mismatch or patterns regarding the skin details or skin texture. So I'll quickly remove all these unwanted pimples and blemishes from the model's face or from her skin. Remember, skin retouching is basically about fine-tuning the colors and as well fine-tuning the textures in the photo or in the image. So right now we are done removing the pimples or majority of the blemishes from the model's face or from her skin. So once you're done removing the pimples or blemishes, we are just going to come and ensure that every pimple has been removed. You can see others were remaining right here. So that is the advantage of hovering around and you identify or look for those pimples and you try to 
eliminate them. So let's just get rid of this one right here. And by just doing this, you can see that we are now having a very smooth kind of fine-tuned image that is still retaining the initial skin textures that are looking natural. Command minus to zoom out. So after working on the skin, you can see, I'm just going to close the group. You can see before and after for the skin retouching and blemish removal. So after this, you can go ahead and work on the skin tones. So in order to work on the skin tones, create a stamp visible here by pressing Shift, Option, Command, E. Shift, Alternate, Control, E on the keyboard. And simply come to Select. You can come and select the subject. And Photoshop may help you to select the edges of the subject. Sometimes it may do a good job and sometimes it may miss out. So just wanted to select the edges of the subject and don't mind if it has done a bad selection, especially on the top, but our aim is on the skin and it has selected the edges of the skin quite well. So just come and create a new layer, change it, its plane mode from normal and change it all the way down to color. After doing that, just come to the brushes, get the brush tool and for settings of the brush, ensure soft round brush is selected. The mode is normal or pass in the flat 100%. And after that, we just want to sample a color on the model skin that we want the rest of the skin to look like. So hold down the option key on the keyboard, option, and click on that color that you feel the rest of her skin should look like. And after sampling that color, simply start painting over the skin. So click and hold down and start painting over the skin. Just like this. So we are trying to create even skin color or even skin tone. So if you don't have caption, you can use a photo Photoshop in this way but capture is somehow easy when it comes to this process because it has the skin tone tool that you can use to create even skin color so that is more of a recommendation you can learn about capture one and they have a number of videos about color grading when it comes to capture one so i'll quickly paint on majority of the areas that have skin tone to create even skin color or matching skin color for our subject in this case so I'll quickly paint on the hand like that and as you can see the selection of the edges of the subject is helping us to keep within the areas of all the boundaries of the subject or so that we don't paint skin in the background area so ensure that you have painted on each and every single area that has or contains skin color or skin tones for our model or for our subject so once you're done doing this, you can now come and we perfect or fine tune the colors by eliminating colors from areas that we were not meant to paint in the first place, like some areas of her outfit and areas of her hair. So in order to do this, simply you can first of all come and deselect active selection by pressing Command D or can use Control D, then get the eraser tool and the mode is set to brush or pass in the flat hundred percent. I'll just come and I try to. Erase. So the work of the eraser is to rub away any kind of mistakes that we may have done, especially during this kind of step. So I'll just do this and eliminate it from her necklace like that. So once I'm done correcting or rectifying majority of the areas and I feel like I'm okay and satisfied, the next step is simply going to be fine-tuning the skin color. So in case you haven't painted on an area, simply press B for the brush and E for the eraser. So the eraser is going to rub our or erase colors from a given area. So in case you are okay and satisfied with the painting process, you can now come and fine tune the color. So just come and create. And before you create another adjustment layer, you can come to the opacity and reduce on the opacity. So that the color of the skin is looking real and realistic. Then come and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Then come to the reds and you can... In case the skin is too, looking too reddish, you can add more greens or make it more green. And in case it's looking too green, you can add more reds to remove the green color. But I'm satisfied with this. So I'll just come to the lightness and take down the lightness just like this. And by just doing this, you can see taking down the lightness of the red is going to eliminate the oranges from the model's skin tone. So after doing this, I'm just going to come and add more contrast to her skin by creating a black and white adjustment layer then change the blend mode from normal to multiply come the opacity and reduce on the overall opacity of the black and white adjustment layer and that is going to add more contrast to the model skin 
So this is what we have been able to achieve right now. So let's do a little bit more of the color grading. Then we shall come to selective color and target the blacks and come the science and just move up the sun slider to have a more cinematic image regarding the blacks and the blacks are going to look a little bit better and a little bit more cinematic so after that you can even come and target for example the greens and you change the values of the greens in the image so i'm just going to leave mine towards this side and play around with the science to see how that is going to be affecting the image or you can even play around with the yellows so i feel like this is okay so once you're done doing this, the next step is simply going to be to whiten the eyes of the subject. So in order to whiten her eyes, you can come and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Ensure master is selected and come to saturation. Desaturate the image to around negative 78. Then press command I. Or you can use control I. Then get the brush tool. And ensure white is the top color. You can reset by simply clicking on the tiny color swatches. Or simply press D on the keyboard to reset the colors to the default. So just zoom in and start painting on the white area using a white brush. So ensure that you only paint on what you feel is the white area of the model's eye just like that. And that is going to whiten the eyes of the model. You can even do the same for the teeth whitening process. So I'm just going to use command minus to zoom out. So this is what we have been able to achieve. And in case you want to add contrast to the image, simply come, add a levels adjustment layer and simply come and increase on the blacks just like that and you can even move the white point a little bit and this is going to add a tiny bit of contrast to this very image or to this very photo in case you're not satisfied with the colors regarding skin tone you can as well come and create another hue and saturation adjustment layer select the reds and come the lightness and take down the lightness of the reds for the skin to look better to you as a person editing so just move this to your test or to your liking and you can as well add a color balance adjustment layer and come and target any color for example the highlights mid tones and the shadows so for this i'm just going to come the mid tones and add a tiny bit of greens to my mid tones to around one i feel like one is okay once i'm done doing that and i'm satisfied it is time to save the image so simply come to file export come to export as it's going to open up the export as window under the file settings ensure the format is set to jpeg quality is set to the maximum which is a seven for my case ensure the resample is set to by cubic sharper and come to the color space ensure the color space is set to convert srgb and embed color profile and click on export and you can save our photo in whatever location that we want so this is how you can edit a photo in Photoshop from the very start to the very end regarding skin retouching and color grading. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating.